this for impaneling a bench of an infinite number of judges to hear and determine the petition. The petition and motion are brought under articles of the Constitution and also the High Court and Organization and Admission Act as well as the Mtunga rules. The petition and motion are based also on the petitioner's affidavit and supplementary affidavit and next chance and written submissions. The motion is predicted on the grounds that this court has jurisdiction and Article 23 of the Constitution to consider an issue and give remedies including a conservatory order in appropriate and deserving cases. The petition states that a motion dated 26 of September 2024 was tabled in the National Assembly on 1st of October proposing his removal from office as Deputy President of the Republic by impeachment. The motion, the National Assembly allowed the motion on 8th of October 2024 at 9 p.m. On the same night, the clerk of the National Assembly transmitted the resolution to the clerk of the Senate. The petitioner states that the resolution passed by the National Assembly is invalid on several grounds. These include that the impeachment Impeachment motion is replete with general and supported allegations, hearsay and outright lies without particularization, and specificity as required by Article 145, sub Article 1 of the Constitution, and Standing Order Number 64 of the National Assembly Standing Orders. The petition further states that the National Assembly did not conduct a constitutionally compliant public participation prior to passing a constitutionally no prior to passing the impeachment motion and the impeachment motion did not also meet the threshold in article 145 sub article 1 among other grounds the petition asserts that in gazette notice number 13 170 of 29th october 2024 the speaker of the senate <coughs> convened the senate to hear charges on the proposed removal of from office by impeachment. Subsequently, the Speaker of the Senate issued another communication on the same 9th of October 2024, directing on how the proceedings should be conducted in the Senate. It is the petitioner's case that unlike the respondent who will not suffer prejudice conservative orders on a grant, uh, granted, he risks losing his position or being disqualified and being disqualified from holding any state and public office by virtue of Article 75, sub Article 3 of the Constitution. The petition argues that the subtratum of the petition will also be lost and rendered moot if conservative orders are not granted. The first respondent has responded to this petition uh, through grants of opposition raising some of the issues, including that this court has no jurisdiction to hear this matter, because there is another petition which makes this one sub judice, and that is petition 522 of 2024. That was heard, I believe, by my colleague. The respondent states that the application and petition amount to forum shopping are an abuse of the court process. The respondent further states that under Article 1653C, this court lacks jurisdiction to determine the removal of the deputy president by of impeachment under Article 150 of the Constitution. According to the first respondent, the court cannot consider the legality or con the legality or constitutionality of the impeachment motion against the petitioner and on public and of public participation because the motion is yet to be fully considered by Parliament and public participation is yet to be completed. This, the first respondent argues, renders the petition non-justiciable. The petition, the petition is also offends the doctrine of what he calls committee, judicial restraint, separation of powers, among others. The first respondent again states that the impeachment of the deputy president is conducted in time-bound proceedings and therefore this court cannot issue a conservatory order during active parliamentary proceedings, including the ongoing impeachment. The first respondent maintains that the petition 
violated settled law by the Supreme Court in the Wambura and the Mate case. The second respondent also poses the petition through a replying affidavit. The second respondent states that the Constitutional and the National Assembly standing orders provide comprehensive and time-specific legal framework for removal of the, of the Deputy President by impeachment. The process was followed, public participation conducted, and the petitioner was afforded a hearing. The resolution to, uh, to approve the, impeach the impeachment motion was therefore valid and in accordance with the Constitution. According to the second respondent, the timeline of pro for processing impeachment both in the National Assembly and Senate are provided for in the Constitution, namely Article 145, as read with Article 50, 150 of the Constitution. The second respondent maintains, therefore, that public participation was also conducted after publishing the notice inviting members of the public to attend and give their views on 3rd of October 2024, and the exercise was subsequently extended to 4th of October 2024, as directed by the High Court sitting in Kerugoya, and the processes be conducted in the constituencies. The second respondent asserts, therefore, that the petitioner was given a hearing in compliance with Article 47 and 50 of the Constitution and attended the debate in the National Assembly on 8th of October. Thereafter, members of the National Assembly took a vote and the motion was passed. On 9th of October 2024, the Speaker of the National Assembly notified the Speaker of the Senate as required by Article 150 sub Article 2A as read with Article 145 2A. Does the National Assembly follow the constitution and the law of on impeachment of the petitioner? The second, the third and fourth respondents also post the, the petition and application through a preliminary objection that this court has no jurisdiction to hear this petition. Many of their arguments actually mirror what the respondent, the other respondents have argued. On the submissions, when during the hearing of the application for conservatory orders, counsel for the parties made oral arguments highlighting their respective positions over the matter. So for the petitioners, Mr. Paul Muita, senior counsel, teaming up with Machari, Mr. Macharia, Mr. Ngoya, Ms. Waigwa, I hope I got the names right, and Mr. Njomo, have urged the court to grant conservatory orders. Senior counsel put the record straight that the petition is not a forum shopping, as the respondents have argued in their responses. Senior counsel maintained that, uh, that a new cause of action arose after the National Assembly passed a resolution on impeachment motion. This was a new development that necessitated the filing of this petition. Regarding the impeachment of the president or deputy president, Mr. Muite argues that it is a two-faced two process. The first phase is in the National Assembly and the second phase in the Senate. The resolution in the National Assembly gave the court jurisdiction to do justice to the matter of impeachment of the Deputy President. According to Senior Counsel, when the people of Kenya enacted the Constitution, they gave this court jurisdiction to hear and determine anything said to be done in accordance with the Constitution. Senior Counsel asserts that Article 23 requires the court to uphold the Bill of Rights an authority conferred on this court, while Article 23.3 gives the court power to grant <coughs> conservatory orders in appropriate cases. According to senior counsel, Article 25.c is clear that the right to a fair hearing, stroke trial, cannot be limited. He maintains that the petitioner's right to, fair, to a fair hearing has been violated, that public participation was not properly conducted, as the Supreme Court directed in the uh, British American Tobacco case, that this court has jurisdiction to investigate the matter since the National Assembly acted as a quasi judicial body. In the Council's view, the 12 days provided for in Standing Order Number 64 of the National Assembly Standing Orders violates Article 50, sub Article 1 of the Constitution. Further, public participation was to take place in at county headquarters until the High Court at Kerugoya directed that public participation be conducted at constituency level. The notice to that effect was issued late, and according to Castle, that explains why the turnout was a paltry 224,000 people. 
who took part during the exercise. Public participation was not therefore meaningful and did not comply with Article 118 of the Constitution. Mr. Muita, Senior Counsel, again cited the decision in Kitaru Peter Munya and the bundle of their documents on the public as that public interest in constitution of, and the constitutional values is the basis for granting a, cons, a conservatory order. The resolution was transmitted to the national, to the Senate immediately, the, uh, and immediately after the Senate set the process for trial in motion, posing the question, why the haste? Senior counsel again cites the decision in Joseph Enoch Aura on the minimum requirement for effective and meaningful public participation and urges the court to grant a conservatory order. Mr. Macharia, who took up after, argued that the court has jurisdiction, that the matter is not sub judicial, and that the decision in Wambora case is distinguishable from the present petition, since in that case conservatory orders were issued in the middle of proceedings in the counter assembly. In this case, he argues, the process concluded in the National Assembly, a fact that was also admitted by the Respondents' Council before, during the hearing of petition number E522 of 2024 before Mugambi J. On the sub judice Council argued that under the Mutunga rules, a party can approach the court in any manner and the court will have to hear him. On the ripeness, he urges that there are exceptions and relied on a U.S. position that uh, that uh, support to support the argument that where something is to happen one does not have to wait until it it happens uh, so that there is ripeness for the second respondent mr nyamodi teaming up with mr kipkoge wanyama i hope i got the appearances right and mr mwangi have argued that the petitioner is guilty of farm shopping they make reference to petition E522 and, uh, and the prayers in that petition, which are said to be identical to those in the present motion. He also refers to paragraph 6 of the ruling in, in that matter, maintaining that the same arguments made before Mugambi J have also been made in this court. Mr. Nyamodi further argues that the National Assembly passed by resolution on 8th of October 2024 and the parties appeared before Mugambi J on 9th of October 2024 and the ruling was delivered on 11th of October 2024. It was the petitioner's duty to impress the that court to grant conservatory orders in that matter that council argued. The filing of this petition amounted to forum shopping. Regarding the matter before the Senate, Mr. Nyamodi maintains that the process based on a constitutional timeline that the court should not allow the process, should allow the process to go on. Regarding public participation, counsel argues that it is not a must that every person takes part. If the attendance was to be taken into account, elections would be challenged on very many grounds, including that of poor attendance during elections. It was the council view that Article 145 has a threshold with regard to numbers in the National Assembly and the Senate. Mr. Gumbo, who takes over, adds that once the process is concluded in the National Assembly, Article 147, 45C kicked in and the Senate took over and has scheduled a hearing. The court should exercise difference and restraint and once the court can, once conclude, the court can then interrogate whether anything said to have been done is constitutional. Council cite some decision, including the one of Sonko, Mate, among others, to support their position. He argued that the petition will not suffer any prejudice if conservatory orders are not granted, as Article 145, sub Article 5 gives a safety valve for him to appear before the Senate. Mr. Wanyama then takes over and adds that the petitioner is precluded from raising issues that were in petition E522. He argues that the petitioner's counsel informed Mugambi J that they were not pursuing the order for conservative orders at that time. 
The proceedings before the National Assembly had concluded and the counsel for the petitioner did not want to they, they did not want them to respond to the order for <coughs> seeking conservatory orders. That was why the court, that's in Mugambi J, did not deal with the issue of did only dealt with the issue of certification. Mr. Wanyama cited the decisions including Peter Munya and others as the test for granting conservatory orders. He cited the decision in Julius uh, Kariu Kimate also and in his view the constitution provides for timelines which should be respected. On public participation, council argued that this being a constitutional imperative, it should be done within certain timelines and the court should not therefore issue a conservative order that may destabilize the process. Ms. Sanje, who appeared for the third and fourth respondent, reiterates the other respondent's positions that the court has no jurisdiction to hear the matter at this stage and the less, less reliance on a decision from the Court of Appeal in the Mwangaza case uh, that the court has no jurisdiction at this interim stage. Council again relied on the decision of uh, Kariuki Mate and the Honorable Nyaga to argue that the petition will not be rendered nugatory as the petitioner will have an opportunity to come to court after the process is concluded. But the reliance was also placed on the case of Sonko. The first respondent, Mr. Milimo, chose to respond last and reiterated more or less <coughs> the arguments by counsel for the other respondent. Mr. Milimo emphasized that this application seeks similar orders that were sought in Petition 522 of 2024, that the petitioner has not disclosed the existence of did not disclose of that petition, 522, and that this matter is therefore sub judicial and relied on Section 6 of the Civil Procedure Act to support this argument. Regarding the fair hearing, Mr. Mirimo argued that the petition will be given an opportunity to appear before the Senate and relies on Mwangi Wairia case as the Speaker of Muranga County Assembly that a person facing impeachment should not shy away from constitutional processes. In a rejoinder, Mr. Macharia argues that the petition is not a forum shopping. The petitioner only seeks order number four in his application and that the statistics like the ones from Kenya constituency was not an issue in petition 522 so that this makes this petition different. Having considered the arguments by parties and the decisions relied on, I have distilled two questions for, uh, for determination. These are whether this court has jurisdiction to hear this matter and whether a conservative order should be granted. The respondents argue that this court has no jurisdiction as this matter is a constitutional process under Article 145 or and read with 150 of the Constitution. Some of the respondents have gone further as far as, as far as arguing that Article 165 sub Article 3C hosts this court's jurisdiction from hearing disputes arising from impeachment of the president and the deputy president. They also argue that this matter is subjudice since the order sought in this in the application were also sought in petition E522 of 2024. There is no dispute on what the jurisdiction is. It is the authority given to a court to hear and determine disputes before it. The jurisdiction of a court may be granted by the constitutional statute or both. Any time the jurisdiction of a court is challenged, it is a threshold question which the court has to examine and determine. Should the court determine that it has no jurisdiction to hear a matter that is the end, the court should not take any further steps, it must down its source. Those are the famous words of Yarangi <coughs> in honors of motor vessel. Addressing the issue of jurisdiction in Samuel Mach uh, Kamau Macharia, the Supreme Court did state the jurisdiction of a court flows from either the constitution or legislation or both as a court of law can only exercise jurisdiction conferred by the constitution or the written law, it cannot 
arrogate to itself jurisdiction exceeding that which is conferred on it by law. The same point was taken by the same court in interim matter of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. I don't have to read that. The restriction of this court is provided for under Article 165, sub Article 3 of the Constitution. This court has restricted to, to, among others, be determined the question whether a right or a fundamental freedom in the Bill of Rights has been denied, violated, infringed, or threatened and D, to hear any question respecting the interpretation of the Constitution, including the termination of the question whether anything said to be done under the authority of the Constitution or of any law is inconsistent with or in contravention of the Constitution. Further, Article 23.1 provides that the High Court has jurisdiction, to, to jurisdiction in accordance with Article 165 to hear and determine applications for redress for, of a denial, violation, or infringement of a, or a threat to a right or a fundamental freedom in the Bill of Rights. At 165.3, as read with Article 23.1, authorize this court to determine to decide all matters other than those reserved for other courts, such as the Supreme Court, Employment and Labor Relations Court, and the Environment and the Land Court. Article 165, sub Article 6 also grants the courts provisory powers over subordinate courts and over any person or a body exercising judicial or quasi judicial function. The Constitution further grants the court to discuss to determine the issue of interpretation of the Constitution and whether anything said to, be, to have been done under the authority of the Constitution is inconsistent with the Constitution. The constitution authorization given to the High Court is expansive. Whether this court has the restriction to hear and determine this petition must therefore be viewed through the prism of Article 165, sub Article 3b and d, and at sub Article 6 as read with Article 23, 1 of the Constitution. This petition alleges what the petitioner perceives to be violations of his right to fair hearing, a right in the Bill of Rights. Whether the right to a fair hearing has been violated is a matter within the jurisdiction of this court. I must add that the right to a fair hearing that is guaranteed by Article 155 is, not one, is one of the non derogative rights in Article, 1, Article 25C. In Evans, Kidero and others, the Supreme Court co uh, did consider the matter understated in, ref in reference to Article, two f Article 50, sub Article 1, that the right to a fair hearing for all persons under, under Article 50, sub Article 2, which accords all persons the right to a fair hearing that are used interchangeably, sometimes to define the same concept and the other times to connote a minor difference, thus follow under the list in Article 25C, which lists the right to a fair trial as a non-derogable non fundamental right and a freedom that may not be limited. The petitioner also argues that the constitutional imperatives in conducting public participation were not met. This falls within the scheme of Article 165, sub Article 3, so that this court has to discuss to interrogate whether any of its processes or any of the constitutional processes said to have been conducted under the authority of the Constitution met constitutional threshold. In that respect, the issue raised in the petition centers on whether the petitioner's right to a fair hearing guaranteed by the Constitution has been violated and whether anything said to have been done under the authority of the Constitution and any law is inconsistent with or in contravention of the Constitution and therefore falling within the jurisdiction of this court under Article 165 sub Article 3 B and D. Article 165 sub Article 6 further grant this court's proposal powers over anybody only a person or body exercise judicial or quasi-judicial function, including the International Assembly and the Senate when performing quasi-judicial functions. The first respondent has, put, push, has pushed an argument that this court has no jurisdiction 
to hear matter arising from impeachment of the president or deputy president on the basis of Article 165 sub Article 3C. That article provides the High Court has jurisdiction to hear an appeal from a decision of a tribunal appointed under this constitution to consider the removal of a person from office other than a tribunal appointed under Article 144. Article 165 3C is in relation to the process of removing the president or deputy president from office on grounds of incapacity. This process is initiated for the investigation of the president or deputy president's physical or mental capacity to perform the functions of that office. This is a distinct process from the impeachment process in Article 145 as read with Article 150. Article 165 3C excludes jurisdiction of this court over the process undertaken in accordance with Article 144 and not Article 145 as read with Article 150 of the Constitution. sub -judice. the respondents again pushed the argument that the application is sub judice in view of the application that was in petition E252 in E522 of 2024. All sides agree that in that application the issue of conservatory orders was not pursued. This was based on the fact that the process in the National Assembly had concluded. Indeed, counsel for the petitioner read to court an excerpt of the ruling from Judge Mugambi's decision where the counsel for the first respondent informed that court that the process in the National Assembly had been concluded. In the constitutional petitions, it's quite normal for parties to come to court and within a short time, while uh, file within a short while, find the circumstances of their cases having changed and may only have to take other steps to bring life in those disputes. The court, having not dealt with the issue of conservative orders in that matter, I say no more on that issue. <coughs> the issue next is whether this court should grant a conservatory order. The petitioner has urged the court to grant a conservatory order and halt the process that is pending before the Senate. The, petitioner, the petitioner's case is that the process is violative of his right to a fair hearing and that the constitutional imperatives on public participation were not met. The respondents urge the court not to injunct the Senate since it is undertaking a constitutional process authorized by the Constitution itself and the parties have relied on several decisions to support their respective positions. Parliament is an institution established under the Constitution. It comprises the National Assembly and the Senate. The National Assembly considered a motion to impeach the petitioner and pass a resolution. This was in exercise of its mandate under Article 150 as read with Article 145 of the Constitution. Article 150 on the removal of the Deputy <coughs> President provides, I have provided that, I don't have to read it. Article 145 provides for the re procedure for removal of the President by impeachment. A member of the National Assembly, supported by a third of members of that House, may move a motion to impeach the President on grounds of namely gross violation of the Constitution the, the, or the law, where there are various serious reasons to believe that the President or Deputy President has committed a crime under international law or national law or gross misconduct. If the motion is supported by two-thirds of all members of the National Assembly, the Speaker is to inform the Speaker of the Senate within two days. The Speaker of the Senate is then to convene a meeting of the Senate within seven days after receiving the notice to hear the charges. Article 145, sub Article 5 states that the President or Deputy President shall have the right to appear and present, be present before the Special Committee during its investigations. Where the allegations are substantiated, the Senate has, after according to the President or Deputy President, an opportunity to be heard, vote on the impeachment charges. If at least two-thirds of all members of the Senate vote to uphold any impeachment charge, the President or Deputy President will cease to hold office. 
Article 145 lays down the procedure to be followed in cases of impeachment and the timelines for doing so, including affording the person an opportunity to be heard on the charges. I have read the decisions from the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal, as well as those cited by the petitioners. The decisions have laid down the position that it is important to let impeachment process run its course and after which the court would have to look at any complaints or for, for violation of either the constitution, the law or fundamental free, uh, rights including processes. For instance, in Julius Kariuki matter, the Supreme Court stated that, interpret that interpretation of the constitution calls for a delicate balance in the respective mandates of the different arms of government. In the Sonko case, the Supreme Court observed that the removal of proceedings for a county governor are textually committed by the constitution to the leg legislative branch of government. The constitution mandates that the process to impeach a governor commences in the county assembly and terminates in the Senate. The Supreme Court emphasized that the constitution commits to both institutions the exclusive power to remove the governor subject only to procedural requirements set out in the county government act and the respective standing orders of the county assemblies and the senate and the proof of the charges. The Supreme Court then added it has been emphasized in accordance with the principle of separation of powers that in considering applications to review decisions of the other uh, branches of government, courts should strive to achieve a balance between their role as, as guardians of the constitution and the rule of law, including an obligation to respect what parliament is constitutionally required to, fear, to fulfill. In other words, where the constitution requires parliament to determine a matter, in the first instance, as part of its constitutional mandate, Parliament will have the discretion and the power to regulate its own affairs, and the court will be slow to interfere with the exercise of that discretion. Reference in this decision to count assembly in the can also be referenced to the National Assembly. Flowing from the decisions, where the constitution commits a process to another arm of government, the court should allow that process to complete, uh, that arm of government to complete its process before the court exercises its judicial review jurisdiction over the matter to determine whether what was said to be done under the authority of the constitution is inconsistent with or in contravention of the constitution. Granted, this is the first time this country is experiencing an impeachment proceeding against the Deputy President. The petitioner has raised substantial questions including violation of his right to a fair hearing guaranteed by Article 50 sub Article 1 and the ring fence by Article 25 sub Article C as a non-derogable right. The petitioner has also stated that the National Assembly in passing the impeachment motion considered extraneous matters other than those other than the grounds raised in the impeachment motion. There is a further argument that Constitutional imperatives on public participation were not complied with. The petitioner has given a, an example of Keio South constituency, serial number 95, to demonstrate this fact. According to the, to the results of, for public participation in that constituency, the total number of people who were participated was given as 43. Those who supported were 70. Those who did not support were 3. The percentage of those who supported was 162.79%, while the percentage of those who did not support was 6.98. It is implausible that an attendance of 43 people would produce 70 people in support, that's 162%, and 3 people in opposition. The petitioner has raised valid concerns However, 
president bind this court so that although the constitution grants the court jurisdiction to intervene where there is a threat to violate the constitution or human rights and fundamental freedom, the court must exercise restraint in matters of impeachment. This process has been committed to the to parliament, which must be allowed to conclude its part. It is in our constitutional scheme, the people delegated the authority to state organs, including parliament and the judiciary, to exercise their dele the delegated authority only in accordance with the constitution. Article 2 reminds everyone that the constitution is, a supreme, is a supreme and binds all persons and state organs at both levels. While Article 3 places an obligation on every person to respect, uphold, and defend the Constitution. <coughs> Article 10 of Article 1 also is clear that the national values and principles bind all state organs, public officers, and all persons whenever they discharge their mandate under the Constitution. National values and principles include transparency, accountability, the rule of law, and public participation. And as well as human rights. If a state organ fails to abide by any of the values and principles in the Constitution, the court exercising its mandate under Article 165 sub Article 3 will come in and investigate whether anything said to have been done under the authority of the Constitution is inconsistent with or in contravention of the Constitution. It was in this respect the Supreme Court stated in one in a matter case that it would be reluctant to question parliamentary procedures as long as they did not breach the constitution and that the mandate of the court is, to, is restricted to the doctrine of separation of powers to deciding on matters of individual rights and the fundamental freedom. The Supreme Court then stated that in the exercise of their wide political powers, both the county, read National Assembly, and the Senate, cannot act out of the confines of the constitution and the law. For to do so would invariably invite the court's intervention, end of quote. In other words, the constitutional processes are to be, are not about a dash to the finish line. They have constitutional imperatives that must be complied with, and if not, such infractions will not be out of reach of our constitution. The timelines given in the Constitution are on the premise on the premise that its processes will be complied with, will comply with the constitutional requirements. Where there is an allegation that the constitutional imperatives have not been complied with, the if the affected person has recourse to the courts and the courts will rise to the occasion and consider whether state or the state organ complied with the constitution or the law. In that respect, Ours is a constitution of hope and promise that, that institutions established under the constitution will comply with its fundamental <coughs> principles and the promise that the constitution is supreme and any act or omission in contravention of the constitution is invalid. In other words, it does not matter how far the process may have gone since no action is out of reach of our constitution. This is what Lord Henning had in mind when he stated many years back that in act in, if an act is void, then it is in law annality. It is not only bad, but incurably bad. There is no need for an order to set it aside. It is automatically null and void without more ado, though it is sometimes convenient to have the court declare it to be so. And every proceeding which is founded on it is also bad and incredibly bad. You cannot put something on nothing and expect it to stay there. It will collapse. At Call 2, sub at Call 4 of our Constitution is not only the hope but also the promise of our Constitution that we must abide by the constitutional dictates for any act or omission in contravention of the Constitution is invalid. In that respect, I conclude this matter, and this, this is what I say. Having considered the application and argument by parties, the constitution and the president, the prayer for grant of conservatory order is declined. However, in view of the issues raised in this petition, which also appear to relate to those in petition E522 of the 
2024, which has been certified for purpose of appointing a bench of an even number of judges to hear. I certify this petition as raising substantial questions of law and of public interest in terms of Article 165 sub Article 4 of the Constitution. This file is to be placed before the Honorable Chief Justice to consider appointing an uneven number of judges to hear this petition. Given the close proximity of the issues in this petition and those in Petition E522, the Honorable Chief Justice may consider whether this petition may be heard by the same bench appointed to hear Petition E522. I make no orders on the course. Thank you. We seek leave for You said we are ghetto. Yeah, that's why not ghetto. Yes. So for that reason, Your Honor, on private spaces, you seek for tight proceedings and certified ruling to be agreeable to settle and fees. Certified <coughs> uh, copies of the ruling. The ruling. Thank you. Any other counsel? No, no, on behalf of the first respondent, we are only applying for a copy of the ruling. Do you oppose their request? No, not at all. They have that as a request. That's good only. That's good only. I'm sure. And <coughs> for the second uh, respondent, it is not necessary to, to seek leave to appeal a decision of the High Court to the Court of Appeal, Article 164, Paragraph 3, grants them an automatic right of appeal, so we are not opposing that. But not on behalf of the first respondent, we are requesting for a copy of the ruling. Any other? That is a yes. So why don't I just make a general order? Yes. So you apply. at my discretion. Yeah. What do you require? Satisfying copy of proceedings or satisfying copy of the ruling? Or both? I think it's both. So you will have copies. I grant you leave if required. You will have certified copies of proceedings and ruling on payment of char court charges where necessary. And I thank you all. So I'll check the papers and then it will be available. Thank you.